everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Appraisal Buzzcast. I'm Jim Morrison. With me, as always, is our host, Hal Humphreys. Hey, Hal, how are you doing? Hello, Jim. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Well, our episode is such an interesting episode today. Um, we have Tony Moss, the founder and CEO of AmeriCatalyst LLC, based in Austin, Texas, and Eurocatalyst BV, based in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Let me bring her on. This is going to be an interesting discussion today. Hey, Tony, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me. Tony, let me let me ask you just right out of the box, um, what exactly does um, AmeriCatalyst and Eurocatalyst do? What is what is y'all's wheelhouse? These days, it's scenario planning. So okay. I have a lot of experience in scenario planning with mortgage originators, servicers and banks. And um, typically we used to do a lot of business development, but there's so much need for scenario planning now that that's primarily what I do. Okay, very good. And how did you get into this industry? Oh my God, I was afraid you were gonna ask me that. <laughs> Let's I'll, I'll go real fast. Professional tennis player, which led to corporate and political speech writer, which led to corporate intelligence, which then led to investing in a due diligence firm for non-performing loans. And then I went and spent 14 years in Europe working for a division of the Dutch government that was created immediately after World War II to rebuild the country. And in that process, I worked with a team that was the world's first completely online, electronic, paperless originator, servicer, and funder in 1998. And then I took that company into seven countries in Europe. Okay. So you, you've been involved in the real estate and the mortgage lending space for quite some time. Quite some time and in 23 countries around the world. Wow. So, you know, the topic that we're going to be kind of diving into today is climate change and its impact on the real estate space in general. But, you know, we're here at Appraiser Buzz. We're, we're talking specifically to real estate appraisers. And I think there's going to be some interesting revelations um, that we can get into today. But before we do that, I want to take a quick break and hear from one of our commercial sponsors. And we'll be right back. LIA Administrators and Insurance Services, serving valuation professionals since 1978. We provide e &O insurance with a commitment to superior customer service, outstanding liability education, and unmatched claim defense, benefiting over 10,000 real estate professionals nationwide. Explore our exclusive appraiser liability education by Peter Christensen and cost-effective seminars designed to foster your growth. Our underwriters, with an average of 26 years of experience each, are dedicated to supporting appraisers. Visit liability.com to discover how LIA can safeguard your business. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Appraisal Buzz. I'm Hal Humphreys. Today, I'm joined by Tony Moss. She is the founder and CEO of AmeriCatalyst LLC based out of Austin, Texas, and Eurocatalyst BV based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, Tony, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. We got a little bit of an introduction from you. I do want to dive into um, the topic at hand. You know, it seems like not a day goes by that we don't hear about a flood or a wildfire or some kind of climate event um, across the country. Um, and the interesting thing is some insurance companies um, will not issue a policy for certain areas. Um, this is something that's not talked about enough um, besides the issues coming to our climate is how they affect housing. You know, the fact that you cannot get insurance in certain places, um, quite honestly, it seems like a really, really important thing to consider. Um, with more mortgage and insurance companies backing out of coverages, how should lenders be handling risk in these areas? Say I'm in a county in California where there's been, you know, I don't know, 300 to 700% non-renewal of insurance policies. How should mortgagers think about that? Listening to what you said, the problem isn't just 
insurance companies in markets that are failing. And a failure means the insurance companies are exiting those markets. I'm a perfect example. My insurance policy on my home, my little three bedroom, two bath home, brick home in Austin, Texas, went up 38% this year from $5,000 to $8,200. Wow. So ongoing costs of owning a home are absolutely untenable. And the insurance crisis is the canary in the coal mine. If, if there were a fire alarm in the industry, I would be pulling it right now. Talk to me more about that. Why, why is the insurance problem a canary in the coal mine? What, what, talk big picture. What does this mean for, for us homeowners? Let's start with homeowners to begin with. Well, it means that big picture, we are marching toward an uninsurable future right? Climate change is only going to get worse and worse. Extreme weather events are only going to worsen. It's not going to improve because nothing really has been done to cut our carbon emissions. So when everybody talks about, I'm worried about losing jobs, I'm worried about uh, the cost of things to deal with climate change, my response is, let's look at the cost of not doing something. And the insurance crisis is showing because insurance companies are adapting to climate change. They're, they're learning how to price the risk. And on average, if you take the losses from 2022, they're losing a billion dollars every three weeks. No part of the United States is immune to climate change now. You know, California is an easy state to pick on because climate change has, it seems like a measurable, um, extreme examples of climate risk for homes. Um, I'm thinking specifically of the two major climate events that we think of fire risk and flood risk. Um, mudslides. I, mudslides. Yeah. yeah. You get, you get a, a saturated hillside that suddenly decides, Oh, I'm done holding on and it just sloughs off. How does the increased risk translate into increased premiums translate into an effect on property value? You know, let's, let's just back up for, for just a second in terms of the trouble that the mortgage industry is in. We're an industry that extends credit 30 years into the future, right? right. Okay. So already we're extending credit, 30 years into the future when the environment is no longer stable for 30 years into the future and insurance products are an annual product, right? So they can reset the pre premiums on an annual basis. You've got this massive duration mismatch going on. And I, and I'm sorry, I spaced out on the question that you asked me because I had wanted to make that point earlier. Do you want to, <laughs> sorry about that. No. No, I think that illustrates the point pretty well. So you're right. Most people, when they borrow money on a home, it's a 30 year mortgage. Now, you know, there, there are those that do 15 or 10 year mortgages, but they're, they're the exception to the rule. But even if you're doing the extreme low end of the mortgage rate and saying a range and saying, you know, 10 or 15 years, your insurance premium renews annually. So you could find yourself regardless of the, um, favorable situation of your mortgage, the lender is not going to allow the homeowner to not insure the asset because if the asset goes away, the lender needs to be made whole. So you could end up with an asset that has an insurance charge that is not only onerous, but as you said earlier, untenable. How, how fast is that happening? It's, it's happening all around us. It's happening right now. It is here. All right, the crisis is is full on right now, and not enough people, in particular in this industry, are paying attention to it. But I would say in the next year, everybody's going to be ringing alarms, and by that time, it may be too late to do things about it. And I'm I'm curious. So again, from 
you know, for, for residential real estate appraisers, who is that's primarily who our audience is and, and lenders who play in that space, the mortgagee, the lender is not going to allow a homeowner to not have insurance. Right. They're going to they're going to lender place the insurance, which is more expensive and has okay. less coverage and has yeah. less coverage. So in terms of marketability, our our and, and again, all of this stuff eventually translates into a value equation issue. But in terms right. of marketability, if I've got a home where, all right, for instance, your home in Austin has gone up, do you say 30, how much percent? 38% in one year alone. 38% in one year. If you see another 38% increase next year and the next year, another 38% increase, that is a yeah. huge burden. Yeah, I'm going to have to sell. Right. And, and I'm upper middle class America, you know, extrapolate for lower income Americans. It, it's, it, it, it would be impossible. But I mean, so you're going to have to sell. But then how do, do you do? sell when, when someone else has to then assume that insurance burden? Right. Exactly. I mean, this this is the problem. But, you know, I, I'm interested in what your audience thinks about this new announcement by First Street Foundation and Realtor.com attributing a climate score to every property in the country. How is that going to translate into house prices? How's that going to impact house prices? I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about that as well. And, and um, for those of you listening, First Street does a really good job of, of providing um, some deep dive analytics on the topic of climate change and insurance risk. And they also have some really nice interactive maps that you can look at and see where specific areas are being impacted. Um, let's do this. I want to take a quick break and hear from one of our commercial sponsors and we'll be right back. Did you know that NAN hosts quarterly discussions with our appraisal panel on bias, inclusion, equity, and diversity initiatives that impact the appraisal industry? The topic of bias in the appraisal world will remain at the forefront of legislative, agency, and lender priorities well into the future. At NAN, we believe that intentional bias is only a very small fraction of the underlying issue, and that outdated policies and regulations and unconscious bias are a far greater concern. It's our hope to work closely with the appraiser community as partners in an endeavor to improve processes and procedures and ensure equitable treatment for all valuations. Learn more by visiting nan-amc.com. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to The Appraisal Buzz. I'm Hal Humphreys. I have Tony Moss with me today. Tony um, is with the American Catalyst LLC and Eurocatalyst BV, um, Austin, Texas, and Amsterdam, the Netherlands, respectively. Um, we've been talking about climate change and insurance and potential problems with the real estate market in general, but we obviously are concerned with what this means for values. Um, Tony, you know, you were talking before the break about uh, your personal homeowners insurance increased in a one year time frame at about 38%. There are homes around the country that are seeing 60 and 70% increases in insurance premiums. Um, from, from a lender's perspective, from a mortgage industry perspective, um, what, how do you feel that might impact the saleability of homes that have been identified as really problematic for insurers? First of all, I, I think that, you know, I made the comment that the ongoing cost of home ownership is untenable. Um, I think that people are going to be forced to sell because they've got a fixed rate mortgage and an arm escrow, right? And yeah. so obviously when insurance costs are too high on a home, it's going to impede the buying process. People are going to be thinking twice and three times about that. And, yeah, you know, and we, we made a, you made a comment earlier about uh, fires and flooding and hurricanes. And to tell you the truth, the problem isn't so much fires, floods and hurricanes. It's heat and drought that and I'm a, cities running out of water. I'm assuming that's where you're getting your increases there in Austin, Texas, heat, drought, and the potential lack of water coming up. 
Um, no, it's mainly, I think it's hail. Texas okay. has a real hail problem. Okay. Okay. Um, I know Colorado would be specifically worried about water issues in the future. I know that new subdivisions are having a real hard time getting access to water. Um, Look you know, at they, they've restricted building permits because of water. Yeah, and, and just just west of you, um, over there around New Braunfels, I'm familiar with a couple of subdivisions that have private water sources. They don't even have public water available. Have to the homeowners association has to truck in water uh, for those subdivisions. Um, which again, you know, we're we're dealing with with you know overall utility costs. But if you've got a private water source and you do have a massive fire event that becomes a real issue for you there too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the longer these droughts go on, the less water in the aquifers. Yeah. And you know, the entire country is suffering from a lack of water in the aquifers or look at the Hoover dam, which is 17 feet away from Deadpool. Yeah. Um, wow. You paint such a rosy picture for us, Tony. It's uh, it's terrifying. I feel like Debbie um, Downer. Sorry. All right. So let me ask you this. If, if someone wanted to learn more about these issues and to think about them in terms specifically, again, as a real estate appraiser, um, you've got a conference up, coming up in D.C. where you're going to be talking about these issues um, April 18th and 19th. I think the title of the conference is going to extremes, the extreme climate housing financial leadership summit. What are some of the highlights that you guys are going to be talking about? What are some things that people will get from this conference? A, a true picture of what we're facing. And the purpose of the event is to get all of the industry leaders together in one place at one time and try and come up with stop gaps and solutions as to how we're going to deal with the operational impact of climate change on the industry. Interesting. So, for, for example, one of the really cool things people are gonna see, which actually it's scary as hell, but uh, we have the world's most uh, renowned climatologist who's gonna show forward-looking maps of what major US cities are gonna look like in five, 10, and 15 years. It will shock the heck out of everybody wow what are some of the other speakers that are going to be there who are some of the other speakers that will be um presenting at this conference oh my gosh uh doug duncan the chief economist from fannie mae susan wachter from the wharton school julia gordon the uh head of the fha elena mccargo the head of jenny may there there are 58 speakers at the event so anything from Himanshu Gupta from Climate AI, he just spoke at Davos, um, to all of the heads of the government agencies, the FHFA is there, Fannie Freddie. It's, it's a powerhouse. So my next question is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a personal question. If I wanted to go to this conference, could I still sign up? You can. It's an invitation only event. The only person you have to go through is me. And if someone is motivated, really wants to be a part of this, they go to our website, they request an invitation, I give them a call, and they're in. Okay. All right. And um, what is the cost of this event? It's $1,800, unless you're a government official, in which case it's $500. Okay. Very good. Well, like Tony... Tony, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and, and to talk about this issue. I think it's critically important, um, not only for real estate appraisers, but as you said, for all of the stakeholders in the industry um, to, to think about these things. Because Look, we, we, we tend to kind of just trudge along doing our work as appraisers, trudge along doing our work as, as loan officers and that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, this is a kind of thing that could have a an absolutely devastating impact on the housing market therefore prices therefore loans therefore appraisals therefore the entire ecosystem so i think it's really important that you um that you're hosting this conference and thank you for being here to talk about it today 
Well, thank you, by the way, all of you appraisers for what you do. I appreciate you very much. And I hope some of you do come to the event. We've got a session where we're going to be talking about pricing climate risk into home prices and how do we institutionalize that. That's probably the most controversial session of the entire event. Yeah, that's going to be, um, there's, there's going to be a lot of, lot of yelling involved in that event. <laughs> it's interactive. So they are not necessarily yelling, but I'm sure they'll be busy typing to us up on stage. Yeah, no but doubt. Thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. I, I, I fear that, um, this is one of those topics about which I don't know enough to ask really good questions, but you did a fantastic job of, um, if I asked a silly question or a non-pertinent question, you just didn't accept the premise of the question and answered what needed to be answered. So I appreciate you for that. Not necessarily. I just didn't understand how to approach it. So I decided to divert. I love it. I love it. Jim Morrison, do we have anything else we need to talk about today about this topic? No, we're very excited about it. And Tony, we really appreciate your time. I'm going to include in the description a link for them to go to your website and register and contact you if they want. Um, it's kind of long, so I don't want to try and say it audio version. So everybody listening, go, go look at the content description and you'll, there'll be a link to join. Thanks so much, Tony. You're welcome. All they have to do is go to americatalyst.com. Okay, great. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know how to spell catalyst. So <laughs> that's what I didn't want to try and spell all that live. <laughs> yeah. there, there will be a link below in the below the video in the description or below the audio in the description just click on that link and it'll take you right there do you think your audience would be interested in the event absolutely i, I absolutely do um yeah i think so absolutely i i think it you know look it's a thing that a lot of people have not taken the time to consider and think about um Obviously, I have not taken enough time to consider and think about it. Um, I think you're absolutely right. There is a canary in the coal mine, and that is the um, the insurance costs. Um, and the fact, I, the thing that shocked me coming into this and prepping for the interview was you know, the 60 and 70 percent increases across the country in certain areas of, of just just homeowners insurance. And when you think about, like, I, I think one of the takeaways for me from the conversation is even if you've been a really smart um, home buyer and you got yourself a locked in 30 year fixed rate at a really good rate back in, you know, when the rates were next to nothing, um, you still got an adjustable rate escrow, um, escrow account that, that, that can change like that. Um, and that, that, that's where we can get hurt. That's where, that's where, that's the unforeseen that, that, that really starts to hit the, the pocketbook. So my, my principal payment is 1200 a month. My escrow payment is 6,200 a month now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And when I bought the house, it was 2,300 a month. Yeah. That, that, that starts to, like I said, that, that starts to get in the pocketbook. Tony, thank you for doing this. Thank you for um, sure. hosting the event. I hope some of our viewers can go there. Jim, do we have anything else? No, that's it. We really appreciate your time, Tony. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Jim Morrison and Tony Moss, I'm Hal Humphreys, and that is your appraisal buzzcast for this week. <laughs> <laughs>